We'd like you to stick around, but we're going to... Oh, yeah. That's great. We're going to bring up uh, Lloyd Kaufman uh, from Troma Entertainment. Troma Entertainment, ladies and gentlemen. A very big, big wig. Uh, Brian and I were talking yesterday about uh, like our first trauma films that we had seen, and yours was The Children, right? Uh, no, well, that's, you said uh, the trauma just uh, distributed The Children. The, uh, the first, like when I when I first got a VCR, I guess it was in '82, and uh, now okay, sure. Doctor, okay, sure, yeah. Doctor, ah, Doctor, Doctor. What about movies I directed? The Children. Oh, hold on, that's hold on. Oh, I'm not going to talk about the Children. I'm kidding. Um, I'm Doctor kidding. Doctor you just a Tokyo depressed, uh, broken down, low budget film. <laughs> Toxic. Toxic Avenger. <laughs> Toxic Avenger. Sorry, yeah. I'm joking. Very early on. We're at war now, you know. Yes. Hold on, my wife is texting me here. You keep going, though, it's fascinating. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're nailed to your seat, I see. This is uh, why Trova yeah. failed. You and uh, the White Shows? I'm the, I'm, I'm the good guy, right? I'm the guy who's the front man for Trova. If Michael Hurz were doing this, Trova would be so used. My partner, Michael Hurz, who's been, who's, we've been partners for 40 years, he's the nicest, most attractive person. Much smarter than I am, but he refuses to go uh, into the public. And unfortunately, I get sent. I suck. I'm sorry. Go but keep going. It was fascinating. Well, yeah, really. I mean, we're talking about it. It was really interesting. You, you are trying. Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, nice uh, dad, Toxic man. Avenger was one, was one of the first movies that I would watch over and over and over again, right? Cool. Absolutely, um, yeah. And uh, Drow also was uh, like an introduction to titties, right? Uh, yes, it was. Yeah, it was very much so. You, you, cannot imagine, shots, uh, yeah. <laughs> you cannot imagine how many young, sweaty boys have come up to me during various conventions and come up to Mr. Goff, and I have to tell you something. The first time I jerked off was Toxic Avenger. The scene in the steam room when she's jerking off to those Polaroids. And the, and the girl was saying, Wanda's jerking off to the Polaroids with the kid with a head crush. It's the first time I've Where are you going, Mr. Kaufman? <laughs> Uh, come out to our Winnebago in the uh, parking lot. Maybe Roger, I have some place to take you. Roger Corman gets an Oscar for uh, independent cinema. I get a, <laughs> a lot of sweaty 13-year-olds. <laughs> Some big boring <laughs> Tell me the best, but who's one that's more meaningful? Sweaty 13-year-olds with hairy palms. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. You're welcome. We were, we were talking yesterday. Shame this uh, morning. Sorry? Exactly. Hey, there's a 13-year-old kid there. What? Stop that, you bad boy. Stop jerking <laughs> off. Oh, my God. <laughs> What kind of audience is this? Anyway, have you seen, have you heard about Return to Newcomb High? Uh, you know what? We've just I, finished. I, I, if you like a uh, uh, class of Newcomb High, it's our uh, new revisiting of the... Uh, I believe I heard about it yesterday when you and I were talking about it. Uh, well, <laughs> the Stars Media, will, <laughs> Stars Media will be distributing Return to Newcomb High, which Quentin Tarantino uh, suggested should be an event film. Two volumes. So volume one is completed and Stars will put it in a few theaters and then... Uh, we are currently finishing up the filming of uh, Volume 2. You should tell Kevin Smith to uh, be in it. You should uh, come and uh, be yeah, in it. he listens to me. He takes great advice from me. I'm sure. <laughs> 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 tell him to be on Aqua Team, too, while you're... All right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, actually, you should be on Aqua Team. Forget the trouble thing. <laughs> no, I say both. <laughs> He's too good for trouble. He likes to cash two checks. Yeah. What's both. that? Both it is. Two checks. Yeah. Anyway, what are you going to do? Who has uh, who has trauma launched? Like, who, what what are some uh, some not notable names that? Uh... Well, the Toxic Avenger was nobody till I met him. Uh, so he was certainly there'd be no Toxic if it weren't for us. Uh, Actually, there'd be no Sopranos if it weren't for you. Yep, absolutely right. Very true. Very true. And um, how about uh, Sergeant Kabuki Man, NYPD? He was he's a big trauma star. And uh, the South Park guys, uh, Cannibal the Musical. Have you know, seen that? Vincent D'Onofrio, he played, uh, he was in um, the first turn on. The first turn on was his first movie. He's in CSI, I believe. Was it like that? In everything. Uh, anyway, he. Uh, Law and Order. <laughs> Law and Order. Vincent D'Onofrio played uh, a character called Lobotomy in the first turn on, and now he acts as if he's had a lobotomy. So I take full credit for that. He played the book guy. In the uh, book. I'm beloved everywhere. I am so beloved in this industry. <laughs> Yeah, Full Metal yeah, Jacket. Yeah. I got to blow his brains out. It was fantastic. Yeah. He was amazing in that. I would like to blow my brains out, but I do not have the guts. <laughs> the, a career low point, right? I sell comics. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Who else has been in trauma movies? Uh, well, if you, if you look at the trauma... By the way, folks, we have 250 movies 
on YouTube, all free, including Poultry Guys Tonight of the Chicken Dead, my uh, musical, uh, and uh, the 250 other, and the children are up there. Also, Beware Children at Play, speaking of children, has just been put up. And the Toxic Crusader cartoons, they're all free on uh, Troma's YouTube channel. We also have a mutual friend, uh, another filmmaker from New Jersey, Warren Disbro. Oh, Warren, yes. Uh, he's, uh, he's a wonderful filmmaker. We're distributing some of his movies. And, uh, I'm not sure if we put them up. I think they're too good to put up on YouTube. But, uh, <laughs> Excellent. Nothing's um, so, too good oh, to put I, up on YouTube. No, they're very good films. We, we do he's distribute them. And, uh, we do distribute them. Well, do you think we should start calling him lobotomy? Because he just sits there staring at people. And uh, they're not reacting to anything around him. I'm not sure well, he's got some dignity. Guy. He's got some yeah, dignity. Yeah. No, trust me, he has not I'm just a broken down, drunken old, has been <laughs> underground filmmaker. You know, See? He doesn't want to be involved with this. You know, poor guy. He's got his life. You've got your whole life ahead of you. Thank you. I'm done. You've got that car dealership you've been talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Mains Auto. That's right. <laughs> you think you'll ever retire? Uh, not willingly, no. I enjoy movies. I'm a movie nut. And uh, we're, we're writing the Toxic Avenger. We've been doing it for five years, writing the Toxic Avenger Part 5, but we've not succeeded in coming up with something that I felt would please uh, our fans. So we've, we're doing a total teardown and, and starting from scratch again. So Toxic 5 is going to happen, but, but it's, uh, I haven't gotten yet, I haven't quite figured out. The, the, the path. Yeah. But check out the return to Newcomb High. I think that will be our best, the, the two volumes. Volume one will be out soon, and volume two we're completing. Have you, have you considered, uh, today you know they obviously they, they remake movies because like, no kid is going to, today is going to go back and watch the Carrie, you know, the original Carrie, uh, Toxie. Would, would you uh, remake Toxie, give me the opportunity? Well, I've remade the class of Newcomb High. Uh, that was the fans' idea. I, didn't I was not my idea. The fans suggested I revisit it, and uh, Stars Media, somebody there suggested it. There was a trauma fan. But what's interesting about the, the return to Newcomb High uh, revisiting of class of Newcomb High? It's the cheapest remake. Most remakes cost more than the original, like billions of dollars more. Our remake costs less than the original. So, uh, once again, history is made by trauma. James Gunn, I was just in here, I'm not supposed to talk about it, so do not tell anybody. Uh, I just appeared two days ago in his Guardians of the Galaxy, and it's going to be an amazing film. And uh, it's uh, in London, but please don't, I'm not supposed to talk about it, do not talk about it. Please, but seriously, don't talk about it. So uh, he's, he's the best. He's, hold on. James Gunn wrote uh, Tromeo and Juliet, uh, one of our best films, and he also wrote uh, the, the, my first book that I wrote, uh, James Gunn wrote that book. <laughs> <laughs> he's, the, he's the best, he's the best. And, and we are very, at Tromaville, we're very proud of him. And also Eli Roth, who uh, worked with us uh, before he became a uh, big time player. There are many alumni of Troma who are out there in the, uh, in the mainstream who actually have been helped. Trey and Matter uh, are nice to us too. They act in our movies. And, do it for free and stuff like that. It's quite a library, man. Quite a library, you guys. What did the trauma start? What year was it? We began in 1974. Uh, Michael Hers and I decided to try to make our own damn studio so we could have some freedom. And the, the compromise was very low budget, so we, uh, we had to. Did you work in the studio system before that? I cut my teeth on. I, my film school was Rocky. I worked on Rocky. And in fact, you can see me in Rocky playing the drunken bum that uh, Stallone pulls up from the gutter and puts on his uh, shoulder. And uh, we, Troma, they didn't have enough money to uh, produce uh, the uh, location work for uh, in Philadelphia for the original Rocky. So they had the non union Troma team. Uh, we had just done Cry Uncle. Uh, the, the crew of Cry Uncle. They, they weren't Troma employees, but it was non-union. So that group, uh, we went to Philadelphia, found the locations, and then uh, the uh, the producers and Avildsen, John G. Avildsen and Stallone came to Philadelphia, and we shot for about eight days, and the idea was we would try to do as much of the film on real locations as possible uh, uh, until the unions found us. And uh, we got about eight days in, and then they all went back to California, and the truck drivers uh, broke my legs. <laughs> but they, they, they didn't have enough money to shoot on location. 
So, uh, and, and Adelson and Stallone were very keen on having real locations. And all the stuff I do is location. I'm a big believer in real locations. So. And when Adelson got his Oscar, he, you know, usually people who get Oscars mention the big shots and uh, kiss ass. Adelson mentioned me, which was pretty damn nice because I was just a trouble to talk about. So John G. Adelson, good guy. And then I also worked on Saturday Night Fever because I, I, I identified, I tried to identify good directors uh, talented directors, and then I attached myself to them and worked for free and uh, and to try to learn from them. And that was kind of my film school. Those two movies, Saturday Night Fever and uh, and Rock Rocky. There's worse film schools, right? Excuse me. So there's worse film schools than that. Yeah. Well, no, that was good stuff. I, you know, not necessarily against film school, but I, I, you know, I just didn't care to do it after Yale University. That was enough uh, enough book learning for me. Did you ever get a, uh, a script that you, that you loved, that you really wanted to do, but you just you know, couldn't get the, uh, the, the finances, or the budget was too high? I, would, uh, not, I don't exactly get it. <laughs> when people send stuff to us, we're the last stop on the train. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, we, we usually, we are the only ones who recognize that it's good, like Cannibal the Musical. They, they had a rough cut of that movie. We saw that it was great. But we, they didn't, uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone were not interested in, in having Troma distributed. They wanted, you know, and I don't blame them, they would like a studio that could actually get people to see the movie. And, uh, but nobody got it, nobody got it, except for Michael Harris and me, and, and, and uh, we, we, we understood that it was a hilarious film, Cannibal the Musical, and, and we helped them finish it, and uh, it, it's a wonderful film. So we've gotten stuff like that, but uh, most of what we make, we, uh, we create uh, in-house. Or we just distribute movies that uh, are one of a kind outside. Like, like uh, you mentioned earlier, the children. They went out well, there. the, the I children know. was a big hit when it came out theatrically. We were not the distributors. We had nothing to do with making it. It's a wonderful film, but then it fell into disrepair, and um, so we 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 fixed up. The, in fact, the negative is damaged, and we fixed it up and made the DVD for them, and uh, we still distributed. It's a very very good movie, and the guy who, who wrote, who produced and directed it was a big, uh, the, the producer and director, they were big fans of the Toxic Avenger, actually. There's a, there's a, a, a very odd scene when, uh, the, I can't remember the cop's name, but the, the sheriff or whatever, he goes to the house to, because um, to, he's investigating the disappearance of the children, and the, the dude is working out, lifting weights, and the woman, again, titties. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, it, it just was so bizarre, that, that scene, but it just, like, out of nowhere. The, the, I believe he was wearing a, like, a, a, I don't know, print thong, wasn't he? I think I was, if I remember correctly. That, that was what I was wearing when you met me the first time. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got the two. Anyway, the Toxic <laughs> Avenger. <laughs> the Toxic Avenger has an amazing scene in uh, the gym. Uh, it has several amazing scenes in, in gyms. Yeah, when he's doing his uh, wing up to these Well, things. also, uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> You know, they were going to remake the Toxic Avenger. I don't know if you've heard uh, that. Uh, well, that's not such a bad thing because uh, we are economically blacklisted and we're running on the memory of fumes. So if we can get a nice big fat check, uh, that would be very nice. And um, thank you. Because Instead of we are, you can we're, write more checks, yes. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's very hard for independent filmmakers now to get... The, the making of film has become democratized. You don't need a lot of money to make a movie anymore, thanks to the digital revolution. But the distribution system is, uh, and I think Kevin Smith is well aware of this, is still stuck in the Middle Ages and is controlled by a small number of devil-worshipping international me <laughs> media conglomerates. Uh, and that is very bad for trauma. Cannibal the Musical, uh, Citizen Toxie, the fourth Toxic Avenger movie, for example, each of them sold over 500,000 uh, video items with no advertising. They have never been on any form of American TV. Uh, that is called economic blacklisting. So it's very hard for us to keep going. And if the guys who uh, remade Mother's Day, they gave us a check. The guys who are remaking uh, The Toxic Avenger, they've got a very good director named Stephen Pink. He directed uh, uh, Hot Tub Time Machine. He directed High Fidelity. And uh, Grossy Pointy Blanky. He directed that and he wrote it. And he loves trauma. He's a big trauma fan. He's come to my book signings. Stephen Pink, he's a good guy. So you don't go to movie jail for making a good sequel, you know, uh, or a good remake. In fact, uh, any of you gay here? Uh, 
uh, A Star is Born with Judy Garland. Many gay people? They're all gay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I certainly am a gay married man. Um, that, that is a, one of America's classics. It's the third iteration. It's yeah. the third iteration of A Star is Born. It's one of the best ever. So uh, the remakes do not have to be bad. And, and you always have the, as, as uh, what's his name, the, the guy who wrote The Big Sleep, uh, uh, whatever his name is. He, when, he, when people were pissed off that Hollywood was making such uh, 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 bad movies of his mysteries, he pointed to the bookshelf and said, hey, you, can always, you, always got the, you always got those things. So we all have uh, four Toxic Avenger movies, Toxic Crusaders, the fifth Toxic Avenger is coming up. So, you know, we still have those. They're not going to burn them, uh, hopefully. So I, I think the remake will be good. And if, it, and if they actually shoot, by the way, at Cannes Film Festival, uh, we were there. They signed uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger to play uh, a major role in the movie called uh, Floyd Kaufman. <laughs> he plays the X, a character called the X Terminator, a uh, former Black Water uh, uh, Iraq uh, goon who has become an insect, uh, a fighter against insects. I have not read this script, but let's hope for the best. I'm pretty confident it'll be all right. Yeah, how bad could it be? Oh, Stephen Pink's good. He's good. I think it'll be good. Sounds like it'd be great. Do you have any questions? No. You're the biggest horror fan I know. Well, this is all you, dude. This is all you. Trump is more than hard. How dare you pigeonhole this to come from? Slob. Titties, man. Titties? Yeah. I know, I know, I know. But they would have had no. By the way, we don't use those kind of uh, words at Choma because we are politically correct. Uh, women are not called women because there's the word man in it, and that's very bad. And uh, also, girl, you don't use girl. We say gyno American. Gyno American. <laughs> so, if, for example, you're in uh, England, uh, it would be gyno Brit. And it's always interesting the way these guys, they try to dismiss trauma for uh, titties. That's all this guy can think about. And, and, and um, we've had plenty of penises in our movies, too, so remember that. Also, I, I don't think we'd be going into our 40th year, and I don't think I would have been putting uh, three children through Yale, Columbia, and uh, Duke University at full, at full uh, rate, and also 13 years of high school at full rate, uh, were we not uh, having some impact on the cultural landscape. Quentin Tarantino, Peter Jackson, uh, Takashi Miike, uh, <laughs> James Gunn, uh, Eli Roth, uh, I could bore you for a long time with a lot of mainstream directors who either worked for us or uh, found something rather s sublime or uh, serious or uh, meaningful in our movies. And uh, I think if you look at the 253 movies, if you look at the ones that are made in-house, you will see that uh, many of the films that are in the mainstream today were um, educated by uh, the Toxic Avenger or before that. If you looked at Porky's, Bob Clark uh, came to uh, came to Troma to study squeeze play when he made Porky's. So uh, we have a pretty big uh, imprint on the cultural uh, landscape. And uh, I think if it were just, uh, I don't use the word titties, if it were just that, uh, you would, uh, I think we'd be long gone, because there have been people who've tried formulas, and uh, the formula doesn't work. You end up with uh, uh, m most of what you see on the big screen today, which are formulaic, unfortunately. Did you, uh, as the decades went by, did you uh, did you find it depressing that the film became so much about like like the soundtrack and the, the making money rather than uh, like because if you had a movie if you had a script like Porky's today there was no, I don't think they would make it it's too involved the storyline yeah. is way too and there's there's no what's up. <laughs> the shower scene right yeah. by the way there's, there's no toy right. tie-in. Nothing like that. There's a, there's a shower scene. There's a shower scene in uh, Volume Two of Return to Nukem High that is a great shout out to the shower scene in Carrie. Uh, I think we may have taken it a step or two further, but uh, keep an eye out for it. You will, you will especially like it. You like the bazooms. But there's some other. There's some very interesting special effects work, and uh, it's uh, Brian De Palma has, has been a big influence on. Uh, my uh, body of work, and I think he will be very happy when he sees volume two of uh, Return to Nukem High. Excellent. Uh, we want to thank you. Yes. We want to thank Dana for being here. Thank, you, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Th